Who is this Jesus? If you look at the history of Israel, they've been in bondage, they've been subjugated and conquered by many superpowers during that time. For hundreds of years, they have not received a word from God. No prophet was sent to Israel, and they have been waiting for um, liberation from the superpower during that time, which was the Roman Empire. And man, they, they've been waiting for a Messiah, they've been waiting for someone to, to um, save them from these superpowers who have been pillaging their lands and taking them as prisoners and, and, and servants and slaves. No one was to come until that one single night when God broke into the history of Israel and sent someone. Who is this Jesus? When we look at the Old Testament, it's kind of weird and curious because you find an Old Testament God who is angry and vengeful, irate, and commits genocide. And then you look at the New Testament and you find a Jesus who is forgiving, compassionate, merciful, and loving, and willing to fellowship with sinners and, and prostitutes and drunkards. It's weird when you look at the New Testament and the Old Testament and you compare that. But there are scriptures in the Old Testament that speak about a compassionate, and merciful, and loving God. And yet, when you look at the different verses, you kind of wonder, who is this God, really? When I was holding that little baby there at Kingston a while ago, uh, are you still awake? All right, can I pick you up, oh boy? He came, I asked him to come over, and he came to me, can you give me a kiss? <laughs> Not anymore, I told you the freaking going to come Yeah? When you look at him and you know the, the mother and the father, who does he look like? Huh? Mama, that's what the grandpa says too. But mama says he looks more like dad. Is that true? Can you tell me which one you look like? Mom or dad? <laughs> When you look at a little child, you, you don't just look at the face, you also look at the mannerisms, the characteristics, the personality, right? And you can tell. What personality do you have, little boy? Yeah. Uh, is it your mom, mom or your dad? <laughs> he doesn't know, but I'm sure the mom knows. <laughs> well, when I was a little boy, I used to walk around like this. And my, my brothers and sisters would say, why are you walking around like your dad? <laughs> we kind of take after our parents, right? And if you're a girl, you probably take after your mom, and if you're a boy, you probably take after your dad. And um, I meet my relatives after a long, long time, decades, and they say, isn't that Federico or Lico? That's what he was called, that's what my dad's name was. And I said, no, 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 that's his son. <laughs> I'm his son. Ah, oh, you look so much like your father. And this season is supposed to remind us of Jesus Christ. But we all get caught up in, in the commercialism and the materialism of the, the season. We go around buying gifts and wanting gifts. You um, get involved in exchange gifts. I hate, I hate exchange gifts. I was asked if I wanted to bring up an exchange gift for a chaplain a party over at St. Rose. And I said, no, I don't, I don't, I hate the exchange gift. For one, it gets me into the mood of, I want that gift. And then, and then they had this exchange gift where the first person who chose the gift gets to pick whichever gift he likes out of the 20 gifts right there. And it's like, and we have a Santa Claus who reminds us that Children should be nice and not naughty. And if you're naughty, you don't get a gift. Right? Is that the way God is to us? 
Can we contrast uh, that with a baby in the manger, the Jesus Christ who's gentle, and you kind of wonder, why would God have to come as a little baby? If we look at Colossians 1 verse 15, the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all, over all creation. This reminds me of the creation when God said, let us make man in our image. And we can't translate that to mean, well, you know, our, our uh, physical appearance looks like God. He's not. He's spirit. He doesn't have a head and arms and body and feet. He's spirit. So, verse 15 says, the Son, Jesus Christ, is the image of the invisible, not visible, an invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. So he is the image of God. Hebrews 1 verse 3, the Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation, the exact of God. That's what Jesus is. And let's go to John chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. And here we break in. John chapter 1 sounds almost like Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Logos. And the Word was with God. And yet the Word was God. So He's the Word. He was with God. And He is God. He was with God in the beginning. And through Him all things were made. He's the Creator. So this Word that we find lying in the manger, a little baby, He's the Word. He's the Creator. And without him, nothing was made that has been made. And yet he chose to become like a little baby. Born not in a palace, not as a priest's son, but born in a humble place, probably with some animals we don't really know. So he was the word and creator. Verses 4 to 5, in him was life. And that light was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Verse 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. So he is the light and the true light. And yet he comes like a little baby. Humble. Needing parents, just like that little baby. If that baby survived without you, we got. Then someone else has to parent him, right? Verse 14, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He was with us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 18, no one has ever seen God. He's an invisible God. In fact, Paul, when he went to Athens, says, I bring to you the unknown God. You want to worship the unknown God just to be sure that you worship all the gods? Well, I come to you with the unknown God. I'll reveal to you who is that unknown God. Now, he's an invisible God. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. I kind of wonder if he's an invisible God, and then the image of God is Jesus Christ. So he's the one that represents. And yet he came so that we can see him. We can't see God. He's invisible. And you kind of wonder, I remember back in the Ten Commandments, they had um, this a commandment that says, don't make unto you any idols of anything, because God is not like, God is not like any animal, anything created. He's not like anything created. He's not even like a human being. And yet he chose to come in the person of Jesus Christ like a human being. He is the Son of God. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Why shepherds came and worshipped him. 
He is the good shepherd of all the shepherds. He's the one, the good shepherd. He is the king of kings. And if the Magi were in the kings, we don't know. It's an expression of God. Jesus Christ is the king of kings. He is the bread of life. Remember that where he was born? He was born in the town of Bethlehem, which means Come on, this is a test now. Dan Rogers told you about this. <laughs> that land means? Huh? That land means faith, which means house, and lechem, which means? Bread. That's right. It's a house of bread. It's a bakery. The house of bread. He is the bread of life. Jesus is the bread from heaven. The manna in the desert now become Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Word of God which we saw in John chapter 1. He is the Creator. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the true light. And Jesus is the revelation. I would like to add that the ultimate revelation. He is the Son of God. That's who this Jesus is. But why did he come? He sent servants, he sent prophets, he sent a lot of people back in the Old Testament. But why did Jesus have to come? Matthew eleven twenty seven. All things have been committed to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. None of the prophets, none of the servants in the Old Testament. No one, not even Moses, knew the Father the way Jesus knew him. It's like, you probably have seen my father if you grew up with my father, but you can't, you know, you don't know him as much as well as I do. I won't know your parents as well as you know your parents, right? All things have been committed to me by my father. No one knows the son except the father. And no one knows the father except the son and those to whom, to whom the son chooses to reveal him. Jesus came to reveal the Father because no one else could reveal Him the same way that Jesus can. Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. Jesus is the perfect revelation of the Father. And Jesus is the true image of God. You want to know who the Father really is? You want to know who God really is? Look at Jesus. He is the exact representation the image of the Father. And it's funny, in Matthew 11, which we read just a few slides back, right after that, where he says that he came to reveal the Father, Matthew 11, verse 28, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus came to reveal the Father. And you know what? The Father is just like Jesus, full of compassion, and mercy, and kindness, and He taught us to love our enemies. He taught us to love the Father with all that we've got, and He says, love one another. And he says, love your neighbor. And he says, love your enemies. That's who he is. The humble king. Came to Bethlehem. And lived the moments. That's who the father is. 